Go back. All right, let me pull this up. And uh, we can do some side by side here. Um, I don't know, like, I, you know, like you see the, the numbers. I mean, <clears throat> I kind of almost, at this point with you guys, I almost kind of want to jump uh, right into, you know what I should do too, though? Let me see if I can, uh, hold on one second. Let me, um, let me grab your video. Take a second here to open this up. It's almost almost kind of want to just go to uh, uh, the kinetic link graph first, and then come back and sort of look at some of these numbers um, after we've you know kind of after we've uh, looked at how you're moving. I think that's I think personally it's probably the better way to go. Like just look at the overall movement first, and then we can go back and get a little bit more detail. So I think what I'll do is bring up the kinetic links first. Just talk, we'll talk about that. So um, the uh, the one on the right is your 2015, and then the one on the left is your 2016. And so I mean, obviously, you see a pretty significant change. Um, I mean, pretty really over re overall, pretty dramatic change, uh, mostly with respect to engaging lower body and then transferring really up through here, transferring you know through the core, uh, and then even with the release. Where here there was kind of you know very little lower body they just kind of turned out of the way upper torso um, you know was almost kind of doing the same thing and really the arm kind of got out on their own and then kind of reached the peak the club was releasing the whole time and then it kind of you kind of get that rounded hang on and a lot of arms through the impact zone right so you're turning your torso for position and then you're really relying heavily on the arms through impact so here what you have is Good lower body. I mean, we certainly can keep getting better, but like that's that's considerably better. And then you have really a, a good. I mean, it starts in here, but really up here, and this you have a really good sharp acceleration drive off the lower body of the core uh, or upper torso. And you have a really good upper torso to upper body. Now we, I mean, we could you know like to see maybe more of this kind of thing. But still, the fact that deceleration occurred and then acceleration occurs off of that peak so nicely is very nice. And the, the, the shaft is kind of going, but you, at this juncture here where you decelerate arms, you actually are releasing the club as opposed to just kind of hanging on. So, you know, I think that, like, overall, a lot of really awesome things have gone on, um, you know, over the last year as far as that sequence of events and, and the power outputs. And I think... Again, I don't know. It's kind of hard. And little apples to oranges um, in terms of comparing speeds because, you know, it is quite a, quite a you know, year is a big uh, difference. But, I mean, you can see that when you look back at, at the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 what do you call it, performance profile, you know, speeds look, uh, now release speed's pretty good, but, like, overall speeds and, and trajectories and stuff are pretty, pretty awesome. So I, I think... I think I think the video here would still be. We can even do potentially. I think this video is still active. Yeah, I think so. Did you get the videos that I sent? I sent uh, one video of the swing, and then I sent also animations I um, attached to an email. So I sent those kind of separately. Right, this is the old one. So, I mean, you know, you can look at, if we pull up, let that play through. I mean, just visually, we can kind of take a quick look, too. Um, I mean, I think what I, I mean, really what I'm looking at, so it's get you up to transition and then, Transition here. I mean, you know, just even visually, you look a, a lot different. I mean, transition. We can go look at the data, but posturally, lower body, you know, uh, um, you know, overall kind of engagement just visually looks different. You know, just looks a lot, a lot more athletic and a lot more ready to change direction. And then when you get into 
the change of direction even is way more athletic, right? I mean, because you're up here, you're in this position, and then you're you can see the lower body drive, which here is kind of like everything's moving together, and the lower body's not moving real fast. Where here you've got a really nice movement, lower body drive in the upper torso, the arms lag off of the torso and then accelerate away from the torso and really release the club pretty nicely. You know, whereas here, everything's kind of turning together. You don't really get any real upper body lag. And then you just, right, you flip the club there. You can see the club, you know, kind of like bump, done its deal. And now you're just kind of hanging on from there. You do get some separation visually, but you're really just kind of hanging on. I think there's a considerably different uh, movement when you, when you analyze the, um, the, the graphs first and you see how much more effective you are in releasing the club from the ground up. I mean, really nice. And then even just visually, it looks considerably different. You know, so you've got um, you know, a lot of really good stuff going on. Here, you really were kind of almost hanging on to the club from like right in here all the way down. You know, you're just kind of hanging on at that, <clears throat> at that end. Here, um, the club gets out a little bit, but because of the way you've, you really sh like kind of slammed on the brakes in the torso, allowed the arms to drive. I mean, if you look at that same basic body position, you know, it's just considerably different. You can see things are trapped back behind here, and the torso is kind of flinging the club. Where here, the uh, the arms are are driving off the torso and really releasing. So, you know, even visually it looks good. Graphically, it looks yeah, like night and day. I mean, that's that's a really substantial improvement. And you know, club speeds. If we go back real quick and just look at the performance profile, we had like. Angular speed, peak angular speed is about the same, but um, if you look at like uh, per, percentage utilization, 82% versus 64%, that's huge, you know. 98% utilization of uh, the linear outputs as well, and even the linear and, and uh, angular, you know, having a little bit, little, you know, or, you know, a little bit more through the impact zone. So, you know, speed-wise, it's up. Movement-wise, significantly up. Um, Let's look at lower body action, I think, because the lower body was definitely something. So we still, you still have a little tendency. So the one thing I look at here is this was kind of slow and rounded, you know, and, and definitely started transfer kind of late. And this was kind of muted. It wasn't real aggressive. wasn't real effective. So here you've got more of a peak going in and out. Still not real meshed up with the lower body. But what you got here is here you had... A late, so you had a really rounded, slow transition, kind of, you know, sluggish on the transition, late forward weight shift, and then just kind of kept sliding through the impact zone. Where here, you're much cleaner in transition, rotationally. It's much more distinctive, much more aggressive move, movement in terms of change of direction. Where you're still not totally synced up on getting that lateral or that linear component, but what you are doing, even though it's still only about eight centimeters, you're, you're moving forward and now you're stabilizing. And that to me is a huge, huge one right there. That stabilization, so where you're you're moving forward and then you're stabilizing, you know. So you could probably get so you know the lower body kind of wobbles a little bit, and then you know you know you kind of get that movement. We can make cleaner by just working on this, you know, this you know couple milliseconds basically that that like early transition stuff. Um, we can you know clean that up, but you're definitely heading the right direction, you know, with that for sure. Um, so if, if you have any questions, just interrupt me and, and uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, talk about it. Yeah. I think, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think that... Um, the lower, well, you know, again, partially it's it's what you're, it could be partially kind of what you're expecting to feel versus, you know, what what's what's kind of going on. I mean, you're still not totally engaged. I mean, we still there's still room there. But I think what what ends up happening is I use an example of this <clears throat> of the group that I'm working with um, the, the kids here, and um, we do this uh, rotational battle rope thing, and. Uh, at first, in the first part of it, I mean, they were just all over the place, you know, big movements, um, you know, sloppy, the ropes pulled them off of balance, they were, you know, getting literally kind of pulled off their feet, you know, pulled forward, pulled sideways, whatever, 
um, and really not very effective at all. And now, if you look at them, if you wouldn't, if you didn't know, and, and, and I'm not saying that you guys, I'm just saying, but gen, generally speaking, if, if you were looking at them and didn't know, and you were expecting, and, and I said, oh, they need to get more lower body involvement, and you looked at them, you would say, oh, well, it doesn't seem like they're using their lower body at all anymore. Because now they're super stable, they're super explosive, and they have very uh, compact movements. But they can absolutely shred those ropes. I mean, they just they just just slam the ropes with virtually no effort, you know. And so I would say that the lower body is way more engaged now, and the core is way more engaged now. So to some degree, uh, you know, the movement, the, the more subtle and compact the movement, the better. But certainly, you want to feel engaged. You, know? you want to feel like you're gripping the ground, you're engaged with the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it does because yeah, I mean Right. I I think it's uh yeah. I I guess I do. I mean, I think that like the big the, the your these happen so quickly. And there's so little resistance to the movement. It's one thing when you're swinging the club into an impact bag or you're doing a towel drill or you're doing some other exercise. You've got resistance at some level. You've got resistance, which makes the feeling much more pronounced. When you get into actual golf swing, there's virtually no resistance to the movement. So the, the, the speed at which things are happening and the sensory perception of what's happening is going to be way, way less than when you're doing an exercise, for example. So like – Actually feeling it per se, like cognitively feeling it, is probably not a good thing. Just because if if you're moving slow enough that, and that's why I say like big movements with the lower body are are recognizable, but they're not necessarily good. The, where where more compact explosive movements of the lower body are really great, but they're happening in such small order. So to some degree, I would say that <clears throat> the the way to kind of think about it. Uh, Potentially, you know, it's, everyone's going to sort of um, have their own view of it, and I think that's important to sort of get, sort of get your own feel for it. But in a way, you might consider that uh, what you're feeling, like like you may be looking for a certain lower body feeling, but really the cue is something else. You know, like it's a it's a feeling, but it's a feeling that that you get because the lower body and that trans like this the whole thing in here, this thing is like if you're talking about, I mean, this whole thing here is half a second. So you're talking about, you know, maybe a quarter of a second, maybe, you know, so, and it's, it's so ballistic. So to, to really say feel lower body per se, just as one example, I'm not saying that's, you know, but just as an example may not be realistic, but to have a sense a feeling or a sense of what you're doing can be, you know I mean? It just may be changing what it is that you're sensing or wanting to sense as a function of doing it correctly. I don't know if that makes sense, but I mean, I think like, oh, go ahead. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. You know, I think that you're going to get a sense. Um, there'll be, they'll, you'll, you'll get a sense that things are working well. I mean, obviously the data is the best, you know, best feedback. But even in, in terms of movement, you're going to get a certain sense that things are going well, certain external cues or whatnot, internal cues maybe. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, that's the whole point really is, is that to, to, to work on changing the nervous system, not the cognitive, you know, I think that's maybe more than any other sport, but certainly all sports are, have this same issue is thinking through a process that's really not meant to be thought, you know, is more, it's the, the nervous system response is much cleaner, much more efficient, and, and certainly in timing with the types of speeds that we're trying to pr produce, you know, um, and when you start thinking about things, and that feel, it's sort of like, I was talking, it's funny, but like, you know, it's like when you're really hungry and you, um, and you eat, you know, your brain doesn't, doesn't sense that you're full fast enough, right? So you, you overeat, right? And it's just, it's the same kind of thing when you're, when, if you're, you're relying on senses that aren't fast enough to essentially, you know, yeah, I think you got it. I think you got it uh, as far as the, the, um, the concept and it's working well for you because your movement patterns, your and then it shows visually and then it shows in the data, you know, in terms of outcome as well as just the pattern itself, you know. So, I mean, to me, it's that's some really good stuff. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I think that, you know, golf is, you know, golf is one of those sports where because you're not necessarily reacting in the same way you might do a baseball pitch or a tennis uh, volley or, you know, whatever it might be, it, you, you, it's harder. So like in most of those cases, you can work on form and technique away from, you know, the, the, uh, the activity, but ultimately when you're actually performing the activity, you're just responding and you're not thinking about the, the technique as much as you're trying to you know, get to the ball or adjust to, to, to movements or whatever it might be. So it, it definitely, it's a little bit easier to not overthink the, the mechanics of it because you don't have a whole lot of time. You know, you're not, you're not necessarily in that mode. So with golf, it's, it's a little bit harder to just say, okay, when I'm working on my swing in the gym or I'm working on my swing in terms of exercises on the range, you know, where I'm doing progressions, I'm doing, I'm some, I very targeted ball striking, I'm working on aspects of shot, you know, all those kinds of things. Then when you get in the game, you just play the game, you know, and, and that's, I think, a little bit harder for golf than it is for some of the other sports just because it's less reactive, you know, it's slower moving. So it's, it's hard, it's, it's easier to sort of get, uh, you know, in your head, you know, but, you know, like so many things have changed really positively for you. If you even look at, say, for example, your, your core mechanics. Here we had, you know, this position that was a little bit more bent forward and, and a little bit more neutral, and then you basically just bent forward. I'm sorry, extended, uh, extended back, you know, like kind of the whole time. So because of the position, um, whereas here you're stabilizing in that forward flexion position, lateral bending is stabilized, and then you get this gradual lateral bend, and you get this, you know, kind of uh, later gradual extension. So you know, again, if I was to draw these graphs. I'd basically be drawing them like I draw, and you know, I mean, and as opposed to here, you know, where you're, you were a little bit, you know, what I'm saying here, this is way more stable. So, I mean, your your core stability, way way better, way way more stable. So you you've got um, you've got a, 
it's marketing. You got a lot of really good stuff going on, and they're all part of that. And if we go and we look at, for example, if we look at the next level of stuff, uh, if we look at even muscular loading, which I usually don't really get into too much until we get, you know, some reasonable coordination going. But if you look at now even your coordination on the loading, you get a stretch. It's not quite as clean as it could be, but you get your shorten, and this is your transition, and it's right at the point where you start to make that movement to, you know, transition. That's exactly what you want to see. I mean, we want this a little cleaner. Whoops. We want this a little cleaner, you know, a little cleaner here and a little bit sharper. But generally speaking, that's that's what you want to start to see. So you're engaging the core musculature. You're, you're creating good dissociation, good upper body lag. You know, all those things are occurring quite nicely and you're tracking really well. And now upper body, not as much, but that's the next chain, right? So that's the next link. I mean, when I look at what I would start to do with you as far as developing a program, it would definitely be continuing to work on core, lower body, you know, foundation core, but definitely want to work on core out more, you know, so we get a sharper, more ex accentuated arm, XL, D cell, and then just a cleaner acceleration of the club for it. You know? But you get, so what you're getting is you're getting that stretch. You got a nice lag going, but then I think what ends up happening is you kind of get in this zone here and it's just kind of stalled out a little bit on you. And then, you know, you've got this little bit of a gap and then you don't have a huge um, acceleration. So you're not getting like, so we're not benefiting as much from that upper body lag as we could. So we can work on developing upper body lag off of, um, off of, uh, you know, improved lower body torso, but really working on the mechanics of upper body lag as well. And I've actually got some new stuff that I'm working on with the, with the kids. And then I've actually took on an adult group. They're just amateurs, but um, they're pretty serious about what they're doing. And although some of them are better than others, um, we just started training for the spring. And, I, and I've introduced some new stuff with respect to upper body for them as well. Because I found that, of course, these guys aren't your level of play, but they are, they're definitely – you know, everyone seems to really like more. More and more people are getting the core lag, but the upper body connection, you know, is definitely the next kind of thing. You know, to really start working on. So I've got existing upper body dissociation stuff that I have, but then I've introduced some new stuff um, this winter that I'll I, I can show you as part of your program. But I think you know, you track. You, you don't want to stop working on lower body and core, but you want to track up the chain for sure. Get get cleaner upper body, you know, upper uh, upper body arms kind of connection. Um, and then the last thing we can just take a quick look at the club dynamics. But I was I was looking. It's like you got your your max. And you're pretty much right on top of your max output. But what's really nice is how clean it is. I mean, it's it's really clean. I mean, you're coming in. You're pretty much maxed out down the target line. You've got, um, uh, you know, just a little bit of Y component, a little bit of Z component, which means you're kind of, you're, and, but you're crossing right through there. And so you're coming in, you've got a little bit of inside out downward as you're coming in, and then you're really flat, square, nice flat spot right there, you know, uh, and then, you know, from there. So it's say like the, the, the delivery of club also looks really good, you know, and, it, and what's nice about this is that you're getting the most out of it too. I mean, it's really efficient. In terms of not just the trajectory of applied speeds, but also in terms of the amount, like the percent max output, you know. So that's that stuff looks really, really good, you know. So really, what I would do is I, I think that you know, when you look at you visually, if we just went back uh, to the uh, your current one, I mean everything just even visually looks really good. I mean it's just fantastic. But I would say. In transition, what we can do, although man, that just you can see where you've got it's just a good move. Lower body's really, you mean just visually, you can see the lower body boom kicked in right there, and then you get the upper body lag, and then upper body's driving, you get the arm lag. So, I mean, it's it looks really solid. I think we can work on enhancing the stability part, you know, in terms of enhancing your grip on the ground, which is only going to improve your grip on, uh, or not grip, but your engagement of core. So that way, and what I think we can do it to, to here is to get a little bit better blending of that forward movement combined with the rotational movement. Not overdo it, but to get a little bit better drive to go with the rotation. And I think that'll just, that'll create more of this kind of movement as opposed to sort of this kind of flatter movement. Um,
Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I mean, like, so for example, today, this is a, just a, a sort of a side example, but so today I had um, the adult group, we were working on torso to arm relationships. So uh, sort of the distal end relationships. And um, so one of the things I have them do is have them do some uh, sort of alternating chest presses on a, uh, uh, a, a diet, like a stability ball. And, and the reason we do that is, well, first of all, we have them do a reverse bridge, right? And you've done like a you know, like reverse bridge where, you know, like if you've done like, or not a reverse bridge, but reverse plank. So they're, they're on the ball in a reverse plank kind of position, which means they're now uh, engaged, engaged glutes, engaged core. And then in order to, to, to drive up, I have them push and then actually come up off the ball it's under control but bring the shoulder up to create a little bit of dissociation between the lower body and the pelvis or a lower body or pelvis and the upper thoracic uh, our torso as they do that and what they found right away is to do that they have to really be stable with their feet on the ground right so the, the more stable they were with their feet on the ground the better their core was engaged and the, and the better the core was engaged the more they were able to relate that to arm movement so yeah, same kind of thing, but I think a lot like what we were just talking about is you're way better off experiencing it in, in a in a cued fashion where you can't help but experience it rather than thinking about doing it, right? So so what so like you know again in this process with with, with I was describing with them today, I, I I'm not trying to tell them to grip the ground. I'm I'm trying to tell them how to push their upper body. And then automatically they're telling me like, oh man, I really gotta grip the. I gotta use my feet better, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, you know, what we want to do is we want to get we want to get you doing some stuff that make you do that without you thinking about it. You know, you 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 want to get it as a function of the 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 process that you're going through more than than trying to think about doing it. You know what I mean? So I've got some I've got some stuff I can toss your way um, and and uh, you know, I think what I'll do is I'll create a little bit of a sort of like what I did for Brian, a little bit more of kind of a customized program. And I'll throw I'll throw out some ideas and some ways that you can really start to fine tune this process a little bit. And then I'll shoot a video um, that kind of goes through it. And I'll throw in some stuff that you may or may not sort of get more examples maybe than even exercises, depending on what you have access to. But I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about in terms of doing it rather than like kind of you know, producing it or thinking about it, if you know what I mean. I think eventually it's one of those things that you just, once you do it, you just sort of intuitively know how to do it. It's hard to explain, but um, so the, the feelings are so minute, it's kind of hard to feel it, but you just kind of intuitively know you're doing it. And I think like there's certain exercises I do with like the, the boys in particular that are some are golf related PST and some are just exercise related kind of movement patterns. But where when I first told them how to do it and it showed them and explained it, whatever they, you know, they got it. I mean, they're, they're bright, you know, 15 to 17 year old, but they did when they did it, you know, I mean, they, they didn't know what the heck they were even doing. And to be totally honest with you, I mean, only, only maybe one or two got it for a while. But I didn't like overtrain it. I just kind of let them keep figuring it out, you know, and, and not figuring out by like, what does this feel like, but more like the end result, you know, like it's kind of hard to explain. I'll show you some examples in the video. But what ends up happening is now, now they're three months into it, but even before the three months, they were, they, they are like, now I look at them and I, I just, I mean, I'm like, damn, they, these kids are nailing it, you know, like their exercise, their movements, their, everything they're doing, they're just absolutely killing it. And I can tell you that. My coaching of the patterns has been absolutely minimal. I've just set them up to do stuff and let them kind of figure it out themselves and uh, cue them only when absolutely necessary, you know. Um, and I think that this is more for your your coaching, you know, I mean, as well as your own playing, but for your coaching. But I found that I think if parents were watching me or if other coaches were watching me, they would be freaking out that I wasn't saying enough and that I wasn't making enough corrections because sometimes they did. You know what I mean? They did this stuff god awful at times, you know. But I, I literally, literally kind of let them go with. I mean, I cue them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like I, you know, just whatever. But, but it's really minimal, and I really, really try to let them figure it out for themselves. And uh, uh, I think that works best, and it works the fastest. I mean, it seems to me that today is a perfect example with the, with the older guys. They're, 
all I said was kind of show them. And then while they're doing it, they're saying to me like, oh, do you mean like I should be doing like this? Like I should feel like my arm coming out. You know, you know? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, well, for me to do that, I really got to get my feet grounded, don't I? You know, like they're telling me. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, do what you got to do to do that. And then you'll be doing it right. And then we'll, we'll be, I'll be happy in a few weeks. You know? So, well, I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's got, yeah, I mean, there's definitely that issue because there's certainly stuff that I see, you know, or that I do that's, you know, obviously my, my art form or my, my whatever, you know, but I think that, I think one of the things is, is that, uh, this is the first year that with say like the golf, like Academy that we're calling it, you know, like off season kind of thing. This is the first year I've ever really done it at this level on my own, not through somebody else. You know what I mean? Where I'm like saying, this is what we're doing. And I'm not trying to help somebody else, like, you know, kind of create the program. And the program has been absolutely phenomenal, rock solid. And I've got tons of data that I'm processing through to show the progressions and all that kind of stuff. So one of the things I think I can do now that I've gone through it, really maybe the first time ever for golf, and really said, this is exactly how I would do it. I'm not trying to work within somebody's system or within somebody's, you know, whatever. I'm just saying, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Even down to, like I said, minimal cueing and how I cue and how what the types of things I look for. Um, all those things I, I kind of work through in this off season. And my goal is to kind of package it up a little bit. And you, it's not a cookie cutter thing. You still have to get your head in on it. But I think if you have... A foundation of saying, look, these are the kinds of things I would do. This is what worked. This is the like the level of cueing that worked. And then maybe run some workshops where we get people to come in and really hands on. You understand the program in the, in the first part, like understand what we're doing, and then be able to explain, like explore the, the the program yourself, as well as watching other people and kind of cueing other people, maybe other coaches. You know, what I mean, going through it. Um, and really learning sort of the art of getting eliciting movement because your style can be different than mine as long as you understand what it is you're trying to elicit and what kind of works. Uh, that's all that really matters, you know. So, so, but what I'll do to start here with this is I'll, I will um, I'll, I'll put together a program and then I'll, I'll shoot a quick video um, or maybe a little bit longer video than normal where I just take you through a bunch of stuff. Um, and your exercises as well as examples and thoughts about stuff and, and then kind of take it from there. And sort of what I'm doing with Brian, I think we can do is, is, uh, it, uh, if we can, even though we're long distance, if we can communicate on stuff, even including maybe shooting some video of your, of your exercises. So I can kind of like, even though it's only visual, I can kind of critique and yeah. So I think we can, yeah. So I think it, it will go a long way. Yeah, it depends a little bit of, on, on kind of how to put it together. I would say no more than three times a week. Two might work just fine. I mean, to be, to be totally honest with you, I think, you know, I'm finding now, you, you're, especially if you're doing other stuff. I mean, the kids, the kids I'm working with are, are uh, they play other sports. Most of them are playing hockey right now. They also, um, they do, do some, you know, strength conditioning on their own or with the team or with, a, you know, I mean, a trainer or whatever, and they also are finding time to hit balls, and and a few of them have you know been lucky enough to go to Florida for a couple of weeks or a week or so and play and stuff like that. So you know you don't like this isn't the only thing they're doing. So to me, honestly, I think they've made. I, I don't think they would have made any faster progress if we did anything more than what we did. And I only had them doing uh, the program twice a week for an hour. And I, and honestly, I, I if you. If, if someone said, oh, do you think you, you know, if they were be willing to go three days and like, you know, amp it up and I'd say, I, I wouldn't do it. I'd stick right with where we're at, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh.
No, absolutely. I mean, I think any additional training, especially if it's more movement based um, and, and, you know, kind of like functional based it, it is awesome. Any, any conditioning that you're doing, any cross training that you're doing, um, I think is fantastic. The only thing I would say is that um, in some cases you would want to make sure if you're doing patterns that uh, are close to the types of patterns that you really want to do a certain way that you maybe modify the exercise to make sure that you're you know producing the pattern. But other than that, I'd say no, I, you can't really do any harm. I mean, the better shape, the more cross training, the more stuff you do, absolutely, yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, definitely, definitely. So I'll put the stuff together. I'll try to have it all, all kind of zipped up uh, by the weekend so you can have something to go, go for next week. And then we can get back together if you have any questions or whatever. Sounds good? Awesome, man. Yeah, have a good one, guys.